all in all, you might think, what's Rory just doing in the middle of a field again? I did ask myself the same question. Uh, but basically, the reason why I'm here at uh, six o'clock in the morning um, is I just wanted to come and visit this place. Uh, it's not just a random field, you might be thinking. Uh, 536 years ago, to this day, at more or less exactly this time, uh, this field and the fields beyond it would be scattered with about 30,000 men. Um, lots of cannons, lots of swords, horses and a couple of kings. Um, so this is Bosworth, if you hadn't already guessed. Um, so I'm just here on the 536th anniversary at pretty much exactly the same time as when the armies would be lining up, ready to kick off and claim a kingship of the country. So, sort of behind my head from about here all the way over to there it was uh, old King Dicky, King Richard III, the old hunchback. Um, and he had about 20,000 men. So he was up for the fight. He thought, yeah, this is an easy one here. And then behind me, over that bush there, which I'm going to take you in a minute, was uh, King Henry, uh, the Welsh king, uh, Henry Tudor. So it's quite an important place, to be fair, because this is where... Um, English monarchy changed hands and it's where the last English kings actually did battle um, and fought in battle and lost so um, yeah I'm going to take you on a little tour might find it boring might find it interesting but we'll see so in a few hours time fight only lasted about two hours apparently which you wouldn't think it'd be long for a battle. But yeah, in about two hours time, three hours time, these fields would be littered with thousands of bodies. Of dead Englishmen, Welshmen, French. Um, quite a poignant moment. And it's quite relaxing. The birds just singing in the trees. You wouldn't think that this would be absolute carnage about 500 years ago. But it was. So the ground would be trampled, charred with fire from the, uh, the cannons and the gunpowder. Something's obviously happened here. But the land itself is pretty pretty boggy. That's why it's called the Fens. That's why it's on Fen Lane. Um, but a nice little poignant moment. Just looking across the field, just imagining, and then randomly just a small spot of poppies, bang in the middle, nowhere else, just there. Again, thousands of men died here 500 odd years ago. It seems a bit weird that there's just a little bunch of poppies there. Is that where King Dicky fell? Beautiful. So the sun started to rise. And the troops were all ready for battle about this time. Maybe engaging in a few taunts from either side. They would have to get across this small little stream which ran the length of the field and then over here is where King Henry was waiting after he'd walked from Wales down the A5 he stopped at Merryvale Abbey and trampled all the stuff there 
and his dad Henry VIII, he had to go back to the Abbey about 60, well, 60 years later, I think it was, or 100 years later. And he had to pay the monks at the Abbey for the damage that his dad's army had caused. So Henry would be over here, probably round about where the tree line is in the farm, maybe a bit further back. Stopped off at the Three Tons Inn in Atherston, apparently, but that's just rumours. Then he marched up the Fen Lanes, ready to meet Dickie. His army was over there. Ready for a scrap. So the battle would have been fought on both sides of the lane. Um, lane's just behind me, you can just see the... Um, I can't zoom in there, but you can just see the, the sign just there for the road. So two sides of the battlefield, loads of blokes over there, loads of blokes over here. Messy. It was pretty boggy um, back in the day around here. As I've mentioned before, um, and in the distance, you just see uh, Stoke Golden Church Spire, which is that one. So, um, when the old Dickie was finally slain, somewhere down there, people reckon, um, they took the crown and they went. Up to Stoke Golding, up there, stood on top of a hill, which is ironically called Crown Hill, um, and that's where King Henry VII was crowned king, just down the road from probably where you'd live. Some of you probably knew that already, I'm guessing quite a few of you didn't, that's why I've done this. So we're pretty much in the heart of the battlefield, I know it all looks the same to you, but it's always good to keep your eyes on the ground. Nice bit of um, artillery artillery piece from a cannon there. No, it's a bit of farming machinery. But it's always good to keep your eyes on the ground. Used uh, a lot of cannons and stuff here. A lot of cannonballs have been found, musket shots, musket balls, like the one pictured. Uh, but these cannons only fired about 300, 350 to 500 metres, so you've got to imagine Henry down there, Richard over there. So there wasn't that much room between them, but all across this field it's been littered with cannonballs and musket balls. So this is obviously why they think that this is the battlefield. So uh, if you're thinking about getting your metal detector out as well, don't, else you'll get shot by the farmer. So this is pretty much where uh, old Henry, the Welshy, French, Anglo king was, Tudor dude. This is where Tudor dude was. Um, just there in the gap between the trees. Might not be able to make it out. But you can just see a little flag flying. And that's Ambien Hill. So that's where the Bosworth Battlefield Centre is. You can just about see it. So that's apparently where Richard started his, uh, his troops from. But obviously came a lot closer than that. Two and a half miles uh, difference. And then... Over here, on the far ridge, is where that dodgy geezer Stanley was. Just waiting, just waiting, seeing what's happening. Um, and Richard come all the way from where that flag is, all the way down here. His army's got separate, well, got separated from his army. Um, the main fighting was probably over in this part of the field and over the road and he saw uh, old Henry so he thought you know what I'm gonna have a bit of him so he rode down supposedly from that hill but I think it's a bit too far I think he was just behind that tree line 
there's a little ridge there that you can see said he rode down a massive hill which there's no massive hills around here if you know this area old Stanley copped it he thought oh, oh here we go so he come riding in and the rest is history so between Stanley the dodgy geezer and Henry the Welsh old King Dickie copped it just about where those trees are apparently so that is pretty much it really um, obviously not much to look at but that field was where Henry was and that field up there is where King Dickie was allegedly um, it's sort of 90% proven but obviously I get all my information off the internet and we all know that the internet is 1000% correct on everything the internet's always right so um, and also time team so yeah um, if you're thinking about coming down here digging the stuff up don't else Farmer Oliver will uh, shoot you and throw you in this uh, stream uh, so yeah on this day 536 years ago exactly this time it was absolute carnage dead bodies everywhere smoke guns going off swords clashing horses neighing so yeah on that happy note enjoy your sunday roasts and um leave it to it so you've got stoke golden church just up there which is uh where the king was crowned and over in that direction is the battlefield, probably about a mile. Um, but directly behind me, um, I'd just like to put a special notice for Stain Plant Limited, uh, which is my Uncle Brian's uh, haulage company uh, for all your hedge cutting and haulage transportation needs. Stain Plant. Get me some permissions around here, Brian, please. So that's the uh, church spire that you could see in the distance. Uh, it's on top of a hill, but you can't really make it out, to be honest. There's lots of houses. People are still in bed. So, um, surprisingly, there's just nothing here that commemorates um, the crowning of the king on this day in about four, three hours' time, maybe, two hours' time. Um, so, yeah, a bit crazy. There's nothing here to, to mark that. But Sunby Stores is just around the corner for all of your grocery and um, convenience store needs. So this is Crown Hill. So I mean, bit weird that there's nothing around to say, yeah, King Tudor, King Henry Tudor was crowned here, apart from a road named after him. So another view of the battlefield slashing crashing and bashing for the next two hours old dicky boy got chopped down about there and then stanley you know that horrible stanley geezer who's just waiting in the wings picked up his crown gave it to henry and they rode all the way, which is not really that far, up there to Crown Hill, which is just a, a cul-de-sac. And then they dragged Richard's body over in that direction on a horse all the way to Leicester. You don't want to know what they did to him, but it weren't very nice. And I'm not going to explain it while you're getting your Sunday dinner ready. And getting that beef prepared because you don't want to know. You just don't want to know. So there'll be a, a wreath laying ceremony at um, Leicester Cathedral, I think, today at some point. Uh, to commemorate uh, Richard Plantagenet's death. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it.